Sometimes things happen in the realm of the senses or in connection with the physical body which cause one to depreciate the body or even to wish almost that one did not have it. In such an event, the soul may reach out so much that the body is neglected until it suffers. Suffering is one of the means of drawing the attention of the soul back to its beautiful temple. The Christ mind can and will direct the soul in taking up its wonderful work in the body that it may continue to have this very necessary vehicle of expression. The light of the Christ mind enables one to see all things in right relation so that peace can prevail. We have learned that the very presence, life, and intelligence of God are ever abiding in man's being. The Spirit of God is what gives you intelligence and life. Spirit has developed for you the mental life which we call the soul. The soul has built the body and ever continues to renew and rebuild it day by day. Spirit has no age. It is eternal, as God is eternal and unchanging. The soul is not old in the sense of being full of years and decrepitude. The soul is ever unfolding God's ideas, and these are unchangeable. The development of soul qualities causes the individual to be more and more mature in his judgments and expressions. The soul ever keeps in touch with that which is true of God and the Son of God and is ever refreshed and eager for life's experiences. The body, which is formed by the action of thoughts of life, love, substance, power, and intelligence in everyone is never old. The very substance out of which the body is formed and which nourishes and sustains it is ever new and responsive to the thoughts of life which impress it. We know that the body is periodically renewed. We can renew and rebuild it and change its appearance by changing our thoughts and living habits. First of all, remember that God is omnipresent, as present as the very life in which you live, move, and have your being, the very substance out of which your body is formed and nourished, the very intelligence which is within you in every nerve, brain cell, and structure of the body. God is the very love which draws together and holds in perfect harmony, if you will only allow it, all the elements of your being. God is the very light which enables you to understand yourself, others, and all God's creation, so that you may always think truth, the true state of all creation. Pray for understanding. Claim your oneness with God. Study your relationship with Him so that you may know how to lay hold of the abundant life, intelligence, substance, and love so that you can build these into your soul and your body to perfect your expression. When you have come to the place where you are ready to cooperate with the source of all good, your indwelling Lord, you are bound to receive his help. From the beginning, all of the qualities and capabilities you need in order to make for yourself a perfect destiny have been implanted within you. Through your study, understanding, and practice of truth principles, you are finding how to awaken, develop, and set free into righteous expression 
all of these inner spiritual resources. Set aside regular periods every day for prayer, times that are most convenient for you. Use words of truth during your silence periods. As you change your thinking and bring it into line with truth principles, a transformation will take place in your consciousness. Your mind will become keen, awake, alert, illumined, and your body temple will be filled with new life. You will be inspired with new and practical ideas that will enable you to succeed in a larger way. We are studying spiritual science to get a broader conception of God rather than holding to the view that he is a personal being with parts like man, a being subject to change and capable of varying moods. Though personal to each one of us, God is it, neither male nor female, but principle. God is not a cold, senseless principle like that of mathematics, but the principle of life, love, and intelligence. God is all intelligence. There is but the one mind, and in reality there are no separate men and women. A full realization of this great truth would do away with all selfishness, the cause of all the misery of earth. We must understand clearly that the real life of all men is identical with our own, and that aside from the one life, all is illusion, that all seeming differences in people are caused by selfishness or desire for something separate and apart from God or our fellow men. The momentous question is, how can man come into harmony with principle? The answer is, by simply recognizing that in his real inner self man is the expression of principle and that seeming sin, sickness, and death are not real. To some this recognition comes easily, while to others it is a matter of growth, but it will come to all who persistently seek. We must learn to declare our oneness with principle, regardless of appearances. Along with our declarations of oneness with principle, we should keep ourselves purified and deny the errors with which false belief has closed the phenomenal world. As we do the works spiritually, the results will surely follow. We are studying a spiritual science as exact in its requirements, as logical in its deductions, and as demonstrable in its workings as the science of mathematics. Exactness and pure reason are the absolute requirements of every successful student. As the fundamental rules of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division enter into and work out the abstruse problem of the advanced mathematician or the simple example of the beginner, so do the fundamental principles of spiritual science work unerringly in simple healing or in the solution of the great problems of life. Now, dear student, the three essentials of success in the study of mathematics are also the three essentials to success in the study of spiritual science. They are understanding of its fundamental principles, pure and unbiased reasoning, and the ability to prove that the principle is workable. Studying cause and principle throughout the world's history, we find records of the wise children of men who have turned from the absurdity of effect trying to deal with itself and sought for the great cause of all. 
In the study of it, they have found that the causing power is mind, and only through knowledge of this power shall man be able to deal successfully with those restless shadows called human life that appear upon the external canvas of eternity. Two thousand years ago, there came a manifestation of human life so conversant with the great causing power of life that he called that power Father, and it was said of him, the Word became flesh. John 1.14 He was a fearless teacher of truth. He spent his ministry freeing mankind from delusions. With the sweeping proclamation, Call no man father on the earth, for one is your father, even he who is in heaven, Matthew 23, 9, he emancipated the race from the limitation of mortal parentage. We are indebted to Jesus Christ and his fearless propagation of truth for our knowledge of this saving science. He demonstrated that sin, sickness, and death are false quantities and are no part of a correct statement of life. Jesus Christ taught distinctly that one is your Father, even he who is in heaven, and that the kingdom of God is within you. 